request for jazz quartet. Please, more jazz quartet, can please. And I oblige. Take a break, guys. Thank you. Hi. I'm Timothy Mitchell. It says so up there on the sign. I am here to explain some uh, settings for some sensitive fabric running on the new 700. So let me make the signage go away. You know who I am now. Here's the 700. What I'm running right here is a product by Endurafab. Okay, Endurafab, it is a um, certified media on all of other latex printers, but not yet on the 700 and 800. The Endurafab, it is called the Frontlit Premier. Endurafab Frontlit Premier. And the Endurafab Frontlit Premier has a treatment which makes it durable textile. In fact, it was the first durable textile that was released for the latex printers. Durable textile, for those of you who may not know, is a um, fabric that prints on a latex that for whatever reason, usually a, a coating, this is not quite a coating, it's more of a treatment. Um, it is kind of impregnated into the fabric and then when you print on it, it has a dry cracked crock test of four or better. Four or better on a dry crock test. This has a four or better on a dry crock test on all of the printers. We have not tested it, of course, for certification for the 700 and 800. I, on the other hand, needed to run it. I want to know, does this work? It's one of our key fabrics, one of our partner fabrics. And this is certified and in all of the Endurafab, if you go down onto the uh, HP Media Solutions locator, you will notice, hey, those are all certified fabrics. This is no exception, except not on this printer yet. I have loaded it on here on the 700. I want to explain some settings for you because I think it's really important. Here, let me take my badge off so that doesn't... <laughs> I don't think that matters that much, really. What I did is this. First, you notice I'm on a take-up reel. This particular fabric needs a take-up reel. You can't run it really without it. You can't push this fabric through. Second, on the last firmware update that we did, make sure you have that, the 700 has an option, which is default for textile. All I did here is took the default textile and I, yes, gasp, I cloned it. I know normally I would claim cloning is mailing it in, but our color work is so good on the default presets we've used and the settings make sense that I just clone them and then make adjustments. But when you choose a generic textile, it will have a setting for the take up, which is called continuous tension you want continuous tension. So that will go in as a default. What it means is when I tape it onto the take-up reel, the tension that the take-up reel applies is constant. It doesn't do sort of that bump tension, you know, where it pulls forward and relaxes, and God forbid, you don't want to use no tension on the fabric. So what you're using is continuously held tension. You're effectively telling it, act as if there were a dancer bar on here. There is no dancer bar on this printer. That allows the tension from the fabric to pull straight down. You can feel that it's continuous. I also increased it a little, but the default, I believe, would be set to 24 on the output tension, and that's good. You want to be able to pull this a little bit. Your output tension setting is, in a sense, your torque. I brought it up just a hair because I want it to be nice and tight. This material, the way this is prepared, is you need to have that tension even and straight and continuous on the front of it or it will not travel through the pinch rollers very well. Another thing is when you choose fabric on a 700 and 800 series printer, the pressure from the pinch rollers is not as severe, it's not as significant as if you chose paper, for example. If you chose paper or adhesive vinyl, the pinch rollers and the drive roller is 
a, makes a stronger point of contact. It has more downforce. With the fabric, we left that a little bit lighter because you don't want to push down so hard on soft textile, which is what this is, and then have it kind of tunnel from the pressure from the pinch rollers that would then travel into the print path. Looking across the platen here, everything is nice and flat. I see on one of the ends, it's threatening to ripple just a little, but it's not enough to come up. And I think that's mostly just probably where the roll was cut when it did the conversion. But everything here is laying nice and flat. I'm printing a full size image, the full width of the fabric. Everything is running exactly as it should. Now there's another setting which is probably more important for fabric and you may need to adjust it. It's called input tension. In this case, I increase the input tension and I have it increased all the way up, up to 40. I want the in, and it says right on the, on the, it's in the advanced tab and it says right there in the description. If you are seeing wrinkling in the print, increase the input tension. And that's what I was seeing is I was having some wrinkling in the print that I didn't like when I loaded it in with lower input tension, which I think the default was something like six. And I brought that up until that smoothed that out. It made a big difference. Now I am, so I have the output, output tension set at I believe at like 30, 35, and I have the input tension at 40. I do not have the output platen covers on. Now, an output platen cover has a dual function. One of the key functions is that it's designed to, uh, we call them the output platen protector is actually the more specific word. It's designed with some felt on it that if I ran a lot of this, that felt, if it accumulated condensation, the felt would prevent that from going onto the platen and potentially coming down and accumulating and dripping on the fabric. We don't want that. That's what they're for. I'm not going to run enough here that I think that's going to matter. And the 700 has a curing unit that's completely enclosed and it extracts the condensation much better than, say, a 365 does. I have left the platen on the flat platen on this material on the printer. I did not use the ink collectors. Looking at the material, it does not appear that there's there would be enough ink going through it. it. It's not quite airtight, but it's close. It did not appear to me that, especially with the way our optimizer works, that I would need to use the ink collectors. I only use the ink collectors for fabric when the fabric is clearly porous, a flag banner, a mesh, or some kind of fabric where I hold it up and it's going to put a lot of ink through. If it barely puts ink through or it doesn't put any at all, like in the case of a coated fabric, I leave the flat platens on the printer. You will get better performance printing with a flat platen where we can have it all rest nice and even. Might even use a little bit of vacuum, but in my case, I have the vacuum set for five. I really don't use vacuum here. I'm using output tension, take up reel, input tension to smooth everything out, Vacuum is essentially neutral. Because I want this to glide well across the platen, I am not using the output platen protectors. I want it to slide nice and smooth across the metal. You will not have any, it'll, everything on fabric will travel very smoothly across this platen in the curing zone. If I was running enough of it, I might apply those output platen um, protectors so that that felt could catch any accumulated condensation. Everything here looks good. It looks right. It's traveling smoothly. I was very careful when I rolled it down to the take-up reel to attach it evenly and to make sure it traveled straight down to the take-up and also noticed I made sure that I did not let it ride on the edges. This is a 61 inch roll. I made sure that my take-up core was like 63 inches long. I want to have fabric needs a little room on the sides to play. It's not always, it's not like adhesive vinyl where everything is perfectly straight to the bottom. Fabric will always have a little movement in it. It's just the nature of the fabric. Make sure you always give it a core that allows it a little play. You don't want to have 
the edge riding right up against it because that can cause it to travel back up and then could potentially cause it to crease or tunnel in a way that would allow the carriage to touch it and it can mar your print. This is running at 14 pass. It's 170% density. It looks very good. Um, there are some pass modes that are faster, which also look quite good. It did not seem necessary, especially with our new ink and the rate that it cures at, which is lower. And fabric generally cures really well because it's porous enough that the heat gets all the way through it, as opposed to, say, an 18-ounce scrim banner, which, has, which is so condensed you have to have the heat warmer. With fabric, everything penetrates through quite easily. So the settings for this, I think I have 199 degrees Fahrenheit, so right around 200 degrees. Uh, and then I have um, the vacuum, as I mentioned, set actually quite low. It's running 170% density. I don't need any more of that. I could probably build another mode and run this very well, even at a little bit of a lower ink signature. But everything on this is printing beautiful. I'm doing a big you know, Byzantine uh, uh, mosaic tapestry here. It's a long print. I want to make sure that everything travels really well. And everything I'm seeing out of this EnduraFab Frontlit Premier looks really good here. But you have to have those settings right. Output, output tension, input tension has to be set right. Low vacuum. And then I'm using the flat platens. If some of the ink goes through onto the platen, don't worry about it. Um, it's, you know, you can clean it off with some Windex. I don't use paper towels ever because they break up in my printer and I don't want that fiber in the printer. I'll use like an old clean t-shirt, something that's not gonna come apart, but is also very absorbent. I may, might use a little bit of isopropyl, I like isopropyl alcohol. You could certainly use Windex in a pinch. What you're trying to do is just wipe down the platen when you're done. You know, it's not going to be much on there, just a little bit. And, you know, keep in mind, all of these can come out and you can make sure it's not uh, on either side. But even if you got a little bit through, it's not the end of the world. You may find with ink collectors that particularly with this material, if it tries to dip into there a little bit, it might not cause it to travel as nicely through here. What's special about this fabric is it has properties that allow it to be used for acoustical panels. Okay, it's certified for acoustical panels where um, air can come through and you can put, um, you know, uh, sound deadening foam inside the panels. It's one of the virtues of this particular product. So it's woven a little uniquely, and then it also has the advantage of being, you know, fairly scratch and scuff resistant, having passed the, um, the croc tests and meeting our certification for um, durable textile. Now keep in mind, this is not as of yet certified for HP latex. It has not been sent out, but I'm going to run my second roll of this stuff here now, and I'm getting some very good results. There is one thing that I will mention that you might want to consider as you're running this material, and I've had to do this from time to time. What I do is it'll be printing fine and everything's great. And the nature of fabric, especially a fabric the way this one is prepared and its function, and you know, which means it's, it's not quite like other fabrics. It has some unique properties. If it gets a little loose, if this starts to get a little loose and it's not quite taut, and I start seeing where, you know, the, the little, it's only on one side here, it's just on the one edge where one of those little tunnels gets a little high and it starts touching. I would let the print finish, or you can stop it and let it finish curing, and I do two things. The first thing I do is I go to the take-up reel and I say, basically, deactivate the take-up reel. I'm going to let that go slack. Then what I'm going to do is roll it forward just a little bit, and that's going to cause some, uh, you know, a little slack, a little, um, uh, little pouch down there where the fabric is loose. And then I'm going to go into the, the fabric, the, the roll itself, and I'm going to tell it to lift the pinch rollers. What I've done is deactivated the take-up reel lifted the pinch rollers, and then I would go in there manually, I've got long wings here, and kind of pull that down and smooth it all out, okay? I'm essentially resetting the fabric. You know, it's gotten a little off, and I'm going to reset it. 
you lift the pin trollers and release the uh, take up, t release the take up first, then lift the pin trollers, pull it down, get it nice and flat again, drop the pin trollers back down, feed it in a little further, and you'll see everything will smooth out back in the print zone. And then I go and tell the take up, okay, let's get started again. I give it a push. It reestablishes tension. It reestablishes tension when it's at the same level when it started. And now I can continue on again. Some fabrics, you can, which, you know, you can load them up or even some individual rolls, you can load them up, run the whole roll completely unattended, trouble free. Others, you might have to pay a little bit of attention to it because all fabric is a little different. All fabric is woven a little different. It doesn't mean it doesn't work. It just means fabric A has to be monitored a little bit. And the way fabric is always wound and converted and the way it's processed, it's always going to have more requirements for attention than, say, adhesive vinyl or banner, which is a very different substrate. So it's not entirely unusual that I might have to pay more attention to the fabric. And direct printing to fabric is always much more challenging than any process like, say, dye sublimation, where you print to a paper, printing a paper is easy, and then you let the calendar press do the heavy lifting to match that paper to a hard-to-travel fabric. I'm printing on the fabric directly, so the fabric always has to be prepared in a way that allows me a direct print. I think what you'll find with latex, and particularly our new 700 and 800 printers, but also all of the other printers as well, the 365, the 500 series, we can print to fabric with no odor, X, I mean, outstanding color, R really does rival dye sublimation in terms of intensity, color pop, saturation, chroma value. I mean, these, if you put them side by side with a lot of dye sub printers, you really can't tell the difference. I have high resolution, I have pigment-based ink, so they'll last really well in sunlight or anything that's sun on them. They can direct print. You don't need a calendar press. Everything comes off of here completely finished. It looks great. It just saves you a lot of steps. And the price of these printers to be able to direct print is very affordable. So your complete investment is actually quite small. There's no odor. There's no smell. There's no gas off. There's no hard shell. You have a nice soft feel to it, just like the fabric is. And if you didn't know better, you would think it was dye sublimation. And sublimation requires not just the printer, but also the calendar press and the knowledge of the whole process. So for ease of use, to be able to direct print on an affordable printer, I think the 700 here is a perfect choice. Everything that I'm seeing here, it looks good. But it does require some settings being right, some patience, careful loading, and then also at times a little bit of vigilance so you're going to have to reset everything, especially if it gets a little bit off. And then on a roll-to-roll -roll basis, you might see some variations. It happens. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for bearing with me on what amounted to be a, a rather long video, but I wanted to cover all of these points and make sure I explain them clearly and uh, let you know that I think this EnduraFab product is going to uh, pair up very, very well with the 700 and 800 series latex as it has been certified for all of the latex generations, including the industrial latex for quite a long time. It really was our first true tested, verified, durable textile that we've offered with HP latex. All right, let's bring that jazz quartet back again.